the first idea to put on the accent was as Lady Edith Greensley. It was for Christian's character, um, Irving. And so they sort of created this construct together to help him with his con that he had this small, small time con, which they get busted for. And in trying to, uh, you know, things sort of fall apart. He does, he breaks her heart. And then she's like, oh, you are hosed. I am going to F with you really badly. And she starts pursuing the FBI agent in order to sort of get to understand where they're at and to kind of be on the inside track. But in doing that, she wants Irving to still know that she's pulling the strings and that she's only being Edith for her now and not for him. Yeah, so I would be uh, American at the end of a couple sentences and stuff like that. Yeah, which is kind of scary because if people don't understand that because it is a subtle thing, but I love little things like that in film, you know. So for the three people that see it and get it, I'm super happy. Yeah. It's some of my favorite moments I've ever done in film, I have to say, are in this movie, and, and one of them is in the dry cleaning. And it isn't because of what I did, it's because of what Christian did, and it's because there's a look on his face that is so heartbreakingly vulnerable and exposed. And I think right then you buy into it. You buy into the relationship in that moment, and her accepting that vulnerability. They have this communication and this way of talking that involves no words, and yeah, I, love, I loved it. The scene that kind of affected me the most was the scene with Bradley where I come out of the accent. And I think because it reached, and it's funny because you shoot it so many times in so many different ways with David and then they edit it, but there was a lot more aggressive, not violence, but kind of violent energy in that scene that got cut out probably for the right reason. So by the end of that, I was pretty tanked. I was, um, and I didn't want to hit Bradley, and they were like, hit him, hit him, hit him. And Bradley's like, come on, and he's like being all crazy, and I'm like, whap. And I, his eyes started swelling, and I just was like, I've just given Bradley Cooper a black eye or broke his face or something. And I started crying, and it was drama. We have to work on it together. So I'm like, great, you're right. I can't do this. Let's see what you got. Because I just told you what I'm going to do. So now what are you going to do? What are you going to bring to the table? Because I told you I'm going to mess with you. I'm going to mess with Richie. I'm going to find out the truth. That's what I'm going to do. So what are you bringing to the table? So it's actually me challenging him to come up to my level. I think just the ride, I mean, really the ride of this film and, and sort of where it takes you, not only in the 70s, but emotionally, it's, it's just so varied and these flawed characters, they're just horribly flawed and yet you love them. I mean, the more flawed they are, the more you love them, you know. Uh, Rosalind, who's like cuckoo and just, I mean, even I think, I think even Sydney ends up loving her because she respects her, she's like, eh, well. Yeah, you're pretty sick, but you, you figured it out, you know? And I think even in that, the scene that we share, um, Rosalind and, and uh, Sydney share, I think there's a level of like, she's right, you know? Sometimes all you have is, I won't swear, but it's toxic choices, you know? And so I think on some level she identifies with her, even though she doesn't want to. We're selling people what they want to believe. So, you know, you want to believe that in an, a market with high interest rates, then we can get you money. We can't get you money, but you want to believe that. So we're just selling them the fantasy that we can do that, you know. It's just how you spin it, right? You're selling a fantasy.